What's in your washing powder? How about your breakfast bar or your shampoo or your favourite chocolate? Not a lot of us can actually 100% answer that question. And I think when I was about 27, in my 20s, I was about as discerning as making sure something was low fat, tasted good, worked well, good value. I used stuff and I ate stuff. It was as simple as that. Uh, I loved microwave popcorn. God, I loved that stuff. I absolutely adored grabbing a bright blue drink after the gym to refuel. I loved the simplicity of plastic pouches of meat and veg dunked into boiling hot water for a simple low-fat meal. I loved going to the pharmacy. I was there every week for something or another and I was always at the doctor's for another bout of tonsillitis, migraines, headaches. I popped a lot of painkillers. I had hormone troubles, digestive issues, and in fact, uh, from discovering polycystic ovaries and then hormone troubles that went on and on and on, I got to a point after a few tests that a doctor said to me that I might have to prepare for early onset menopause. I was 27. Once, back to the tonsillitis, that was so bad that I was actually spitting into a bottle, disgusting, right, rather than swallowing because I could not bear the pain of swallowing. And it was in that moment in my little flattened Bondi, I'll never forget it, that I actually had to admit to myself, I'm not healthy. And I'm not telling you this because it's some sort of tale of courage and woe from a deathbed and becoming the healthiest person on earth. No, I'm telling you this because I kind of started to realise this was normal. And I really feel like we've accepted a new low of health as the status quo. And that's not okay. So something in me decided to get curious. And when you get curious, you start doing some reading, start asking some questions. And I wasn't loving the answers to a lot of the questions I was asking. I started to look at doing a chemistry degree. No, not true. I actually waded through that much scientific literature to ascertain whether the things on my bottles of personal care and yummy smelly stuff and makeup that I was so proud of, I had a huge collection, were actually harmless or dodgy. And I found a bit of both because this is by no means an absolute chemicals are bad kind of situation, but some of them are dodgy. And what I can tell you is that my health changed really fast when I realised that it could be as simple as moving from products to produce as a staple of my diet. I haven't had a migraine in 14 years. I think I could count on one hand the amount of headaches I've had. And... Oh... Hello, beautiful baby boy. He's seven now, isn't he gorgeous? I know, mum pride. So in this process of asking questions, I want to share with you some of the ahas that I had. If you want fresh air, you open a window, right? We are fortunate to live in Australia and have this be the case. It's on demand, it's free and it's quick. But no, we use things like fresh air systems and air fresheners that supposedly make our indoor air more palatable. And when I started looking more closely at what was in these synthetic fragrances, I found a bunch of scary stuff. See what I mean about feeling like you need a chemistry degree? So phthalates, right? There are many different types of phthalates and they fall under hormone disrupting chemicals. Sounds a bit scary. Um, and what I found was that three or four of them were coming up in studies showing that they could block testosterone production, right? And that if a woman was exposed to a high amount of phthalates, that she was at risk of her baby boy in utero potentially, not always, but potentially forming his sexual organs in a not-so-normal way. That scared the crap out of me. Ah, oh, I promised I wouldn't say crap to my mum. I'm so sorry. <laughs> now... Open a window, get our fresh air. Is it that hard, right? So this was one of my big, big ahas. We don't need a fresh air system. Another one was body scrub. Like these days, I just grab some olive oil, a little bit of salt, sugar, essential oils if I'm feeling fancy, maybe some coffee grounds. But back then, I found out that the tube that I was using had this in it. And see that one in red? Polyethylene. It had up to 300,000 microbeads in each tube. 
And this was my first like environmental discovery where it wasn't just about my health, but it was about the whole world because this stuff was being washed down my drain, it was going out into the waterways, the ocean, Fish, it turns out, eat these little bees because they see it as another fish's eggs and so it's food for them. And then what am I doing as an omnivore? I'm eating the fish. And in the research around microbeads, I found a dental hygienist in America first raised the flag on these things because she was finding little bright blue beads in her patient's gums because guess what? It's in toothpaste too. Awesome. So next, cheese. What could be simpler than cutting a piece of cheese and popping it on a cracker, right? Simple. No, we feel the need to buy these little plastic single-use packets where the cheese is in one part and the cracker's in the other part and the cheese isn't actual cheese, it's called a cheese spread and as if it was some sort of a feature, it says right there on the front, made with 50% real cheese. What's the other 50%? <laughs> it's that. Popcorn, back to my old flame, microwave popcorn. So now I just pop a few kernels in a little bit of oil, lid on, pop, 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 two minutes and we're done, right? Simple, so quick, so cheap, organic popcorn. What I used to eat? That. And this hilariously is cheese flavoured and you'll notice that there's absolutely no cheese in there. So they tell us it's cheaper, they tell us it's easier. But I can prove that in two minutes I've got great organic popcorn and that it's a quarter of the price of this stuff and that I don't have to use those bags, which it turns out, get this, are coated with a chemical that never breaks down in the environment. This was me saying I'm okay with that, but not because I knew, just because I was fast asleep, basically, as a consumer. Now, chocolate. Who, who has tried to give up their favourite chocolate bar before? Or any kind of chocolate? Or you think, yeah, you know, I'm going to go two weeks without the chocolate, right? It's not actually that easy. Lots of hands going up. Let me help you dump the junk in a more powerful way than you've ever had to do before. Because when I looked at what my favourite chocolate was, I started to see some pretty ugly things in there. I started to see that there were additives in there that were contributing to asthma, eczema, hives. I started to see petroleum-based colours. How is that a treat? I started to see unsustainable palm oil that I knew from the news was causing deforestation and harming our orangutan populations. That's not a treat. And so when you open with your curiosity and start getting answers to questions, it stops being this, oh, I really shouldn't. No, I've had one this week. No, I'm trying to get down. You know, all those things that we say to ourselves and each other. And it actually starts being so much easier. We start saying, as if I would touch that stuff. It stands for nothing that I stand for as a good person. And when we're awake, this is a really powerful journey to go on. So... Less of our food should be coming from here. More of our food should be coming from here. It's really time that we move from products to produce. It's really time that we start to connect with our food choices on a much more personal level. Because I feel that when we make this shift, and I love this word shift, I love the theme of this conference, because shift doesn't say we have to strive for this crazy sense of perfection. It just means a little move from here to here. And all of us can do that, right? We can all make little shifts. And when we start to use our curiosity, we start to ask questions. And we start to ask questions, we start to get answers. And when we start to get answers, we can actually start to say no. No, I don't want the apricot flavoured cereal that has had an apricot vapour sprayed over it before sealing and actually has raisins in it because that helps them come in on budget. I don't want little strips of factory farm chicken in an easy grab-and-go lunch pack so that I can make my day supposedly easier while it's actually three times the price per kilo of organic pasture-raised chicken. I don't want my child's birthday table to be laced with MSG and petroleum-based colours. He deserves better from me. He deserves my discernment. Should we feel guilty? Absolutely not. 
if we feel guilty for what we were doing yesterday that we didn't know, I believe that to be a massive waste of energy. Instead, I think we should really feel empowered about what we can change from today, little tiny things that we can change. Should we feel overwhelmed? Absolutely not. Because when we're overwhelmed, the way I see it is we become paralysed. And paralysed people aren't very effective at doing new stuff. Should we feel doom and gloom and like, oh my gosh, everything's so bad? You know, no, absolutely not. We should start to have a laugh. Because when you tune in with your curiosity and you start seeing what's really in stuff, I challenge you to watch commercial television without laughing your head off. It's hilarious. It's like free comedy. You can just tap into it anytime you like. Picture back to the microbeads, right? Think of those microbeads, little pieces of plastic floating around in a tube for our freshness and revitalization. And picture yourself going, mmm, plastic on my leg. That feels so good. You know, like, it's actually hilariously wrong, like, in so many ways. It's, we don't need to feel sad or, or bad about ourselves. We actually need to lighten up, as Marty suggested this morning, and realise that when we're awake and we're feeling good about everything and we know what's in stuff, it's incredibly empowering. We need to look to nature. In nature, there's a marketing calendar. We've been looking at marketing calendars and chasing packets and promises, right? You know, it's something, oh, they're bringing out caramel flavour, amazing. But nature has the best marketing calendar going. She's launching awesome new things every week of the year. Wherever you are in the world, she is there. You don't need to drive too far to find her. And it's delicious. Once we learn how to cook, we need to cook. The single biggest impact we can make on our health and the planet's health is starting to cook again from produce because that automatically means we're using less packets. We need to cook with our kids, not just the muffins on the weekend, but meals every day during the week. We need to involve them. We don't want to tower them at the dinner table as if they were some sort of little picky, picky critic, right? You know, a lot of parents here. And, you know, we tower over them. We say, eat your broccoli, little Johnny. Eat it. You have to eat your broccoli or otherwise you don't get this. We need to sit with them. We need to eat the broccoli. We need to talk about how awesome the farmer was we met at the, we at the market that weekend. This is what's going to drive us forward towards feeling like change is a positive thing, not a negative thing. We've been doing change wrong for decades. Ladies, am I right? 80s, 90s dieting, torturing ourselves, thinking that change had to be this horrible, deprivational feeling inside us and we were failing if we ate that tiny square of chocolate and we had fallen off the wagon if we ate a piece of cheese. Like, what is that? What even is that? Right? We need to come back to this. When we cook with beautiful, fresh produce, there's a connection that we make. When we seek out in our personal care and our home products brands that make the connection between our health and the planet's health, brands that aren't ashamed to put an ingredient front and centre on their website, because when you're doing a good thing, there's nothing to hide, nothing. So let's make that shift. With your curiosity, we can dramatically change the world. And if you're thinking secretly, you're hearing this today and you're thinking, oh my gosh, where do I start? I don't even know what to do. And I want to appease you and make you feel like you can do something because in the work that I do with thousands of people, I have realised that we just need to keep it simple. And two phrases I'm going to help you with on your very first day of this awesome new school of life that you are about to enter, and that is what's in this and how is it made? Because when we start from that simple place of curiosity, I really believe we, you and I, have the power to shape our world from our shopping baskets. Thanks.